What is Up Amigos? Today we're looking at a pitot-static tube. We're gonna be looking at what is it and what does it do? And the reason why we're looking into this is because the pitot-static tube is probably the most important instrument in aerodynamics, especially in history as well. And the reason why is because almost every wind tunnel will have at least one pitot-static tube just laying around that you can use. And the reason why is because it, we use it to measure the velocity of the flow in our wind tunnels. Without it, most wind tunnels would not function because we wouldn't even know what the velocity is. So let's go through what is it first. And it is a fairly simple instrument from the looks of it. And we have first this tube that comes straight down. And then at the bottom, we have this right angle and it comes out to a point here. And then we have usually a curved surface. This is usually hemispherical. We'll cover in a second why this is hemispherical, but let's just talk about this tube to begin with. At the front, we have a hole. Then a little bit further downstream, we have holes around the side of this um, tube here. And we have the velocity coming in, the free stream velocity. So there are two different sets of holes. We have the ones at the front, we have one at the front and we have the ones around the sides. And they connect to two different pressure sensor readings. So we have one pressure sensor here, let's say we have sensor one here, and we have sensor two here. And we're going to say sensor one will measure the total pressure, sensor two equals the static pressure, the, the second pressure here. I got ahead of myself there. I should say that the front hole here measures the total pressure. We'll get into why in a second. And these ones measure the static pressure. Again, we'll get into why in a second. So what are these pressures? If you don't know what these pressures are, go back to video number six in our fundamental aero playlist. And we go through the difference between total pressure, static pressure, and dynamic pressure, and how they change throughout a system and why they're important. These are very important concepts that you need to understand for aerodynamics, especially if you're doing experimental work and even CFD, they're all, you need to know what this is. So go check out that video as well. Once you've done that, come back to this, and then you understand what the total pressure, static pressure, and dynamic pressure are. Now, I assume that you've watched that video. So I'm going to just write this equation here, which won't be too strange to you because you would have seen it in that, in that video, plus P dynamic. So the total pressure equals the static pressure plus the dynamic pressure. Why is this important for anything? Why are we discussing this? The reason why is because the dynamic pressure, as you know from that video, equals half times density times the velocity squared. And we use this in a lot of different things. We use this in the lift coefficient, we use it in the drag coefficient, and often in a lot of non-dimensional coefficients, we factor this in. The reason why is because the dynamic pressure gives us an idea of how much energy the flow has. So if we measure the total pressure and we measure the static pressure, we can then put it into this equation, rearrange to find the dynamic pressure, then rearrange this equation to find the velocity. So now we know what the velocity is of the free stream flow. But why does this work? So let's talk about the total pressure first. We have this hole here and the flow comes straight in. You can see that the, this hole here is aligned with the free stream flow. So we're just ramming all this air in. So let's think about if we just had a wall here and we have a flow going straight in at, and it's gonna hit, hit the wall. At some point, the flow is going to decelerate to zero. So the velocity at this point is actually zero meters per second. All the flow that this, the velocity that this had, this flow comes here, it hits here and decelerates to zero. So now this is called the stagnation point and we have a very high pressure, the pressure skyrockets because we not only have the static pressure which is in the free, in the free stream area like we do have here, we also have now the dynamic pressure which has been converted into pressure that we can feel and that equals the total pressure as well. So these, at this stagnation point, we actually have the total pressure being felt and that's a lot more than just the static pressure alone. That's how the pitot-static tube works. So the total pressure here at the front is being felt by the flow being crammed straight in. The sensor one, which is reading the, the pressure from this front hole, is feeling all that flow getting crammed in and that's increasing the pressure and that's the total pressure that we're seeing here. These holes around the side, they're only seeing the static pressure. The reason why is because the flow is traveling uh, parallel to this tube. So no flow velocity of this free stream flow is actually being uh, directed into these holes. This is just ambient air being pushed in or out depending on whether the flow inside these, depending whether the air inside these holes has a greater pressure than the static pressure outside or less pressure. Depending on that pressure difference, the flow will either come out a little bit or go in a little bit. And so that means that this, these holes here are measuring the static pressure. So this simple little tube 
allows us to measure two different pressures and that then results in us being able to measure the dynamic pressure and then the velocity. So let's give an example. Let's say we have um, the difference between the pressures felt at station one compared to station two. So sensor one and sensor two, that equals dynamic pressure. Let's say we measure these two and we find that the difference between these two are 250 pascals, which is anything. You, you can put any value you want here. We're just saying 250. So to determine the velocity, we then just say, okay, the velocity equals the dynamic pressure divided by half times the density square root. Of. So let's say we know what the density is. Let's say it's 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed. Again, it can be anything you want. It could be anything that your wind tunnel actually is. Let's factor that in. So it's now 250, that's the pressure here, divided by half times 1.2 square root. Of. And if you do this calculation, you'll get out 20.4 meters per second. We now know that the velocity here is 20.4 meters per second. That's how powerful this simple process is. So I mentioned earlier, this is a rounded front, usually hemispherical. So if you were to get a sphere, you cut it in half, that's the front half here. Why is that? This comes back to a very important idea. Now to measure the total pressure, we want to have this stem here to be perfectly aligned with the oncoming flow. It needs to be perfectly parallel. If it's at an angle, let's say we have the stem like this and the flows coming this way, obviously we're not ramming all this flow in and we're gonna be getting some sort of separation inside this hole and we're not actually going to be measuring the total pressure. What's more, these holes around the side are gonna have some flow coming in, ramming in. That's not going to be measuring the static pressure either. So we have some sort of botched measurement here. Now, this is obviously an extreme angle and in real life, trying to get the pedostatic tube perfectly aligned with the flow is quite difficult. We might have a 1% error perhaps in, oh, sorry, a one degree error. So that means that the this might be slightly misaligned. Now, if we have a point, for example, at the front, if we misalign that by one degree, we might get some flow separation around this point here, and that could happen because this is so sharp. If we have a rounded front, on the other hand, then we won't get any flow separation because a one degree error in alignment is not a big deal. It's not going to make the flow detach at this point and cause problems. So having a rounded front gives us a little bit more leeway in terms of how um, accurate we have to align the pedostatic troop because it is difficult to get it perfectly aligned. One, percent, one degree error is fairly normal and that's not going to affect much the total pressure or the static pressure. So our velocity is going to be quite good. So that is why we want to have a rounded front here and most pedostatic tubes that you buy will have a rounded front as well. So let's discuss again, just go recap this. The pedostatic tube, what is it and what does it do? So the pedostatic tube is quite a simple instrument but it is incredibly important, incredibly powerful. Every engineer needs to have one. So we have a tube which is coming out of the flow and we have some sensors attached to it. We have two sensors. We have at the front of the pedostatic tube, a hole which measures the total pressure because the flow is getting rammed straight into here. Then a little bit downstream, we have other holes uh, around the side which measure the, the static pressure. Each of these sensors is connected to one set of these holes. One sensor measures the total pressure, the other sensor measures the static pressure. Then we can use this equation here, total pressure equals static pressure plus dynamic pressure to then figure out what the dynamic pressure is. That's just the difference between these two sensor readings. Once we know that, and we know the density of air, we can rearrange this to find the velocity through this equation here. And now we know the velocity of the flow in the wind tunnel. That's important. So that's it in this video. If you liked it, make sure to like it. And if you want to get more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. And if you want to learn more about this kind of thing and other fundamental aerodynamic concepts, check out our playlist and a book called uh, Fundamentals of Aerodynamics by John D. Anderson. It's a book that I used back when I was at a university and I really like it. You can find a link to it in the description below and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out amigos.